In this video we're going to take a look at parallel arrays as well as a binary search. And so what we're going to do is create an application here to actually demonstrate both of these things. So I'll go ahead and create a new project. And for the name of this project, I'm going to actually call this one Ice Cream. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because we're going to actually simulate uh, an order form for ordering ice cream uh, to make this a little bit more interesting. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And we'll get our form coming up here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just add a couple objects to my actual form. So we'll go ahead and add a button down here. I'm going to go ahead and use a list box. And then I'm going to go ahead and also use a text box. And you know what? We'll throw a label on here to just kind of decorate this a little bit more. Uh, make this look a little bit more proper. So I'm going to go ahead and close down the toolbox. For the label, I'm going to go ahead and give the label. I go, I'll go ahead and leave the label just LBL1. That's We're not going to use it in our code at all. So I'm going to come here to the text and I'm just going to go ahead and say enter number of scoops. I'm going to use a colon there and hit enter. And that'll go ahead and prompt the user for the correct uh, text that we're looking for within our text box. My text box, I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. We'll call this one TXT Scoops. And let's go ahead and go to our list box. We'll go ahead and do the list box. I'll give it a name of LST Output. And I'll go ahead and move that up right there. And then for the button, change it up a little bit. I'm going to call this one CMD Calculate. And we're going to go ahead and down here and change the text of it to say Calculate. There we go. So now I've got my form created. We're going to go ahead now and let's go to do some write some code. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the calculate button. And I've got my code here for the CMD calculate click method or event that we're going to be working with. So let's go ahead and begin by creating ourselves two different arrays. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just create a new one called int. And we're going to go ahead. This is going to hold the number of scoops. My purpose is to hold whatever they type in that text box. Um, we want to compare it to this particular array. So we're going to say int. We're going to say we'll give it a num name, which is going to be num of scoops. And I'm going to set it equal to new int. And I need to determine how many elements are going to be in my array. So I'm going to use four. We'll just say there's four scoops. So we're going to go ahead and set those now. And I'm just going to give the options of maybe one scoop, two scoop, three scoops, and four scoops. And we'll go ahead and end this array. And then now here's where the whole parallel array comes in. I'll, I'm going to create another one called it. It uses one as a double. This is going to hold the prices that are going to match up to this first array. So I'm going to use double because I'll have decimal places here. I'll just call this one, uh, uh, I'll just call it prices. And we're going to set it equal to new double. And again, since our original array, has four, and this one is going to be a parallel array, or basically be an array that matches up to it. I'm going to also have four in this particular one. So let's go ahead and match it up, and this is how it all works. With one scoop of the number of scoops, I'm going to have it line up with 0.99 or 99 cents for the price. The second one, a dollar 49. The next one, a dollar 99, and the following one, 2.49. So those would be the prices that match up with this particular array. So this is what the whole idea of a parallel array is. This spot here lines up with this spot. So if I were able to do a search and find out how many scoops they wanted in it, and let's say it came up with one, I can come back to this array and say, oh, the spot zero on this one and spot zero on this one are aligned or matched up. They're parallel arrays. And so what it really is is it's 99 cents for one scoop. And I'll show you how that works as we go through this. I'll go ahead and space this down a little bit. What I need to do now is actually pull out whatever they type in that text box. And so I'm going to create one more quick little one and uh, int x. And I usually don't call my variables just x, y, and z or a, b, and c. But for this case, I'm just going to call it int x. And we're going to set it equal to, um, and now I need to pull off whatever they have typed in that text box, which by default is a string value. And since I'm working with a number, I want it to be an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and convert whatever that's in that text box to an int32. And it's going to be txt scoops dot text. That's what that text box's name is, and I want the text element or the text dot property out of that. So what I've got here is x is going to hold in whatever they type into that text box over here on the design side. So 
here's how this all works. I type in one, two, three, or four in the text box. We hit calculate, and then it tells me the price in the list box. And so I've pulled out whatever they typed in in the text box. Now what I need to do is use the binary search to figure out what spot of my array that number lines up with. So I'm going to say int, and I'll use a y for this one, equals, and here's how the binary search works. I type in array, dot, and then you'll see binary search comes up, and there's our binary search method. And we're going to go ahead and say uh, the first part of this is going to be the number of scoops. Now, how it works is uh, right, right here in our parentheses, the first um, thing they're looking for, or basically the object or parameter that they're looking for, is their argument. They're looking for the array that I need to do the search on. So this is the number of scoops. I'm going to go ahead and hit the comma. Now the second part of this is going to say the object value. I need to find what I'm searching for. So I'm going to type in x in this case. And what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to say whatever x is at the position, whether it's 1, 2, 3, or 4, find that, find that in my array. So if, let's just say x was 3. It would look in through my array and we look at the first element, see that it's not 3, look at the second element, see that it's not 3, see the third element and see that it's 3. And it will record that spot, which is going to be, and it's kind of tricky here, this is spot 0, spot 1, spot 2. It will record spot 2 in letter Y. Now why that's important to me is because I can then now go to my parallel array and find spot 2, which would line up with $1.99. So this is how the, the binary search works. There is one caveat to this, and that's the fact that your array that you're doing the searching on has to be in ascending order. So you see 1, 2, 3, and 4 is ascending. Um, if you try it on, a, on a, an array that's got the numbers kind of mixed up, it, it probably is not going to work right for you. So you need to have them in ascending order. That's the only thing you've got to really be aware of whenever you run the binary search. And so now what we're going to do is I'll just do an LST output dot items dot add and we're going to go ahead and add into it uh, our price there we go and we're going to do it spot y and that will now display whatever spot y finds in the array it'll display the same one uh, same spot in my parallel array so if I go ahead and run it now you'll see that if I enter in three scoops it finds a dollar ninety nine so three and a dollar ninety nine are matching up so if I enter in four scoops, it'll do 249. Now I'm going to have a problem here. If I enter in five scoops, I already know that I'm going to have a problem, and you'll find out here why. If I hit calculate, my program is going to come back with an error, and there it is. It says, hey, it can't find the fifth element in here because it doesn't exist in my array. So what I'm going to need to do, let's go back to debugging, and I'll do stop debugging, is I'm going to need to do a quick condition over this before it actually tries to list it off. I'm just going to do an if statement. I'm going to say if y is greater than or equal to 0, greater than, equal than, there we go, 0, there we go. Then I'll go ahead and run this. Now why in the world did I say 0? Well here's why. Because if it goes through my array bin on the bar binary search and it finds it, it'll return either 0, 1, 2, 3, or basically depending on how large your array is, all the way up to the, to, to the end of your array, starting with 0. If it does not find it in my array, say it was a number that was larger, it actually always returns back a negative number. So this right here would be negative. So if I put in like 20 in my text box and it ran a search and it didn't find it, it would come back here as a negative number for y. So that way if I keep it always above zero or equal to zero, I'm going to be okay with this. And I could also just write a quick else statement and just sit there and say um, in a message box, a message box dot show. We'll just let them know. Um, please pick a number between one and four. We'll go ahead and end that. So now let's go ahead and run this, and we'll do it one more time. And you'll see that if I enter in one, there we go. If I enter in two, there we go. 3, 4, now if I enter in 5, hit calculate, there's my message box. Please pick a number between 1 and 4, and it does not error out on me for this. So this concludes the video on actually creating a parallel array and then using the binary search to find an element within the array.